Have you ever played an adventure story with AI? Because if you haven't, let me tell you, it's a fever dream. And that's exactly why I'm gonna use it for a video. You can even partake in creating the story. All you have to do is chat with the AI that's giving you scenarios. And for some reason, I decided to recreate it as good as I can. Yes, I'm gonna green screen myself into this. And it's either gonna look acceptable or horrendous. We're gonna see. So buckle up, this is probably my weirdest video so far. The website I'm using is called Character AI. I'm gonna create a persona. My name is of course gonna be Aquarine. Then what do we have here? Let me write that real quick. So far I have this. Gender, female. Eye color, gray, blue. Age, 20. Occupation, potion maker. Race, human. I'm not gonna be able to cast magic. I want to solve everything by making potions. Likes, lemons, making potions, art, bunnies, forests. I'm gonna give you an outfit check. My favorite colors are blue and green and Obviously, I had to choose a blue outfit. Um, update. I changed it. I like this one so much more. So yeah, this is my adventuring outfit. Create image. Ooh, young female potion maker. Oh dear, I'm not gonna choose an avatar for now. This video is just an experiment to see if this is actually entertaining. Now let's get started. The chat I'm going to use is called Text Adventure Game. So without more talking, let me get started. This chat has a basic scenario and it's always the same, <laughs> but I don't want to start off with spiders, okay? Please give me a new scenario to start off. Fantasy setting. You awaken in a cold and musty cavern. The walls, carved from some sort of volcanic rock, are slick with moisture. A thin layer of slimy green moss covers the floor, making each step difficult. To the north, the faint glow of torches and the distant echo of conversation fill the passageway that leads away from your chamber. As you glance around the room, you notice a dim light flickering in the passageway to yourself. The faint smell of burnt meat wafts through the area, making your stomach grow with hunger. Oh. Welcome to my new set, the unfinished version. We have a cove out of volcanic rock. That sounds interesting. Do I have a cove out of volcanic rock near me? No. Nope. Instead, I have the power of owning a green screen. I brought some materials. Of course, I have some cardboard, leftover materials, foil, wool. Right now, it just looks like a pile of trash. First thing we're gonna do, Cardboard. I love cardboard. Then cutting knife and a pencil. <laughs> the base is not gonna be much bigger than this. It's gonna have an organic shape. This is basically the map of the first area. These are the two hallways leading south and north. Let me cut it out. <laughs> that looks so weird. I have to think. I feel my motivation fading and I don't know why it's doing that. I like to make things complicated for myself because this is gonna be a filming set where you can remove the walls occasionally. I'm gonna make four walls. One here, one here and then one here and here. The whole thing is gonna be out of cardboard and packaging material. <laughs> Let's see if I'm gonna be successful. Hmm. That's going to be a cave. And this is where foil comes in. This would usually end up in the trash, but I found a use for it. And I have no idea if it's gonna work yet. I am simply gonna glue the foil onto the cardboard. I have no idea if my plan is gonna work. And there's also a little problem. I have to spray it, but I don't have a garden. It's not that good for my lungs to do it indoors, but I have an idea. I do have a window. <laughs> yeah, that's manageable. A layer of protection. <laughs> okay, it's too dark. Ooh, ooh, ooh. If someone's gonna tell me that I could have just used black foil, shut up. I know. 
<laughs> this looks so messy and disturbing. But hey, I got it done and it strongly smells like chemicals in here. <laughs> I hope this does kind of look like volcanic rocks. I have no idea how to assemble this. I have another idea. I don't need this as a base. I'm gonna use this because then I have a free space to place these. Let me cut it in half. And then here, the wool comes in. In the description, the floor is covered by slimy moss. I'm going to glue wool here. And then I'm gonna try to dye it green. Blech, I'm full of glue. This is what we have so far. And honestly, it doesn't look too bad. I chose a soft surface on purpose because I attached some wire back here so I can stick it into the ground. Okay, now it's time to paint this. Please open. Oh, yeah. Who closed these? Oh, yeah, it was me. Watch me mix a beautiful green. Okay, that's not a beautiful green. Now I just have to mix it with water. This looks pretty disgusting on its own, but it actually turned out way better than I expected. You awaken in a cold and musty cavern. The walls, carved from some sort of volcanic rock, are slick with moisture. A thin layer of slimy green moss covers the floor, making each step difficult. To the north, the faint glow of torches and the distant echo of conversation fill the passageway that leads away from your chamber. As you glance around the room, you notice a dim light flickering in the passageway to yourself. The faint smell of burnt meat wafts through the area, making your stomach grow with hunger. Okay, I have to make my first move. Of course I'm gonna head towards the meat and not towards the humans, because I don't want to talk to them, because they could be dangerous. So let's first carefully head south. You follow the passageway to the south, stepping carefully to avoid slipping on the slimy moss. The smell of burnt meat grows stronger as you walk. You also hear a deep grumbling sound coming from the direction. I was trying to stay out of danger. <laughs> After walking for about 10 feet, After walking for about 10 feet, three meters, the passageway widens into a large chamber. The walls are still carved from the same volcanic rock as the passageway, but there is no moss or dampness here. The ceiling is also covered with the same volcanic rock, making the area feel much colder. Interesting. This time I'm just gonna use some foil and that's it. I'm gonna wrinkle it up a bit like this. Okay, this could either succeed or fail so hard and there's no in-between. It's spraying time again. I also made another wall. The floor is now placed outside the window, basically on the roof. I'm gonna be really unhappy if it falls down or if a bird poops on it. Oh, I just asked, is and the AI is like, yes, you. <laughs> you see an old woman bent over a cooking fire. She looks up when you enter the chamber. <clears throat> I don't think I'm good at voice acting, but here we go. Who are you? She grows. The woman is wearing a rough spun wool dress. It is covered in suit, making it nearly black in color. Okay. I have to cosplay the old lady, but I'm gonna do a budget version. Please don't be mad. This blanket should actually serve pretty well as a wool dress. And additionally, and additionally to the blanket, I also brought a cape. It kind of looks like a really cheap Halloween costume. <laughs> her face is wrinkled and weathered and her hair is long and white. Now, an important thing is missing, which is long white hair, which I obviously don't have. And even though I'm a cosplayer, I still don't have a long white wig. I'm gonna have to improvise. <laughs> this is gonna look so cursed. <laughs> it looks so cursed. <clears throat> and uh... <coughs> She is holding a large wooden spoon as she speaks. And last but not least, a wooden spoon. It's a bit tinier than described, but it's fine. <laughs> this whole video is so cursed. Behind her, there's a small table where several bowls and plates sit. Now, the room is not empty unlike the first one, which means we need more stuff. I could use cardboard to make the table, but also what about if I actually make it out of wood, real wood? 
These tiny things usually come with canvases and therefore stabilizing. When I was younger, I didn't know that and I just collected these. So I have a couple of them now. Since they all have edges at the top, I am planning to put them together like this. And the legs it's standing on will be half this height. I don't have a saw. Let's try to cut it apart with this. I made incisions on both sides. Oh, I did not expect it to split that clean. And to get that musty or rusty feeling, I'm gonna wash some paint over it. Um, my impulsive thoughts just won. I was like, what if I... I'm sorry, I just felt like... <laughs> look, it's hard for you. Doesn't look like a heart in the slightest. For the decorations I have, really tiny bottles. Look at them. They're literally perfect. I did not. Oh my god. My book was lying on my keyboard. I ask again. Who are you? And what brings you to this cave? <laughs> As she is speaking, she begins stirring the large pot. There is a strange smell coming from the pot, mixed in with the scent of the burnt meat. You can't quite put your finger on it. Of course, this mysterious old lady has a kettle. How could she not? An empty bottle of chewing gum. What can I say? It's perfect. Oh god. First, I have to get rid of the label. In my opinion, the kettle is too high, which will not be a problem because I can just cut it off. I don't think introducing myself would be a good choice. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say that I'm a random bypasser. Ah, yes. Oh, uh, I'm just a random bypasser. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? I live here. I've lived here for many years now. And I'll keep living here for many years. This is my cave. Do not presume to call me out. Now go away. This is no home for What do we do? I'm just stating the obvious, but this lady seems kind of suspicious. Should I ask her if I can have a bite? Apparently I'm really hungry. You know what? I'm just gonna ask. Oh, um, well then. I'm very sorry for intruding. I apologize, but still I nicely ask what she's cooking in her pot. Can I ask one more question though? What exactly are you cooking in that pot? A little something I've been working on for quite some time. She stirs the pot again, then pauses to look at you. She seems a little bit irritated. You should I think it would be smart to just leave. Let's just back away from her. The woman grumbles some indecipherable words under her breath. She then turns her attention back to the pot. You can smell the strange and unpleasant mixture of odors coming from the pot as you back away. The woman continues stirring the pot, apparently ignoring you. As you back away, you also notice that the torches along the wall are flickering. 
and growing dim. You may need to move quickly if you want to see your way back to the passageway. Well, then I guess let's move quickly. I'm gonna throw a dice to see if I'm successful or not. Let's go. Eight. I think that's not as successful as I want it to be. I start to run, but every now and then I trip. I have no idea how to implement running and tripping on top of that. It will probably look incredibly bad, but that doesn't matter. I'm here to experiment. You start to run away from the woman and the strange smells coming from the pot, but you quickly begin tripping more and more often. The ground is slippery because of the moss and you're not watching where you're going. To make matters worse, the dim lighting makes it even more difficult to see. Yo, kannst du mir als Sprachnachricht drei Omi-Schreie schicken? Aber so auf aggressiv auch, so ich jage dich. <lacht> hurts but thank you i hope it's okay. you hear the woman yelling something behind you and the smell of the pot grows stronger but you can't quite understand what she's saying oh god i keep running how far have i already come is the exit near you continue to run tripping more and more often as the lighting grows dimmer i'm tripping a lot you can hear the woman screaming and shaking her fist behind you but her words are still indecipherable the smell of the pot grows stronger and more disgusting with each step you take you can just barely make out a faint light coming from a wall up ahead it looks like the exit to the passage is getting closer okay important do i make it to the exit in time Five. I don't. <laughs> I trip and hurt my ankle. Now I'm lying on the ground. Great. Your ankle twisted awkwardly, causing you to fall to the ground. The pain of the twisted ankle brings tears to your eyes. As you're lying on the ground, the woman is still yelling behind you somewhere. You notice that the light is getting brighter now. You can tell that the exit to the passage is very close. Now let's let the AI decide if I make it out. I crawl toward the exit. You crawl as quickly as you can, feeling the sharp pain in your ankle with every move you make. You hear the woman's yells and the smell from the pot fading behind you. Your hard work pays off and you reach the bright light of the exit. The dim lighting in the cavern is replaced with the brightness of the outside world. You can see the passageway that leads back to the chamber behind you. I made it out! Yes! And that's where I'm gonna make a cut. Because after all, this was just a test. Just tell me if you enjoyed it, if you had fun watching it. And do you want a part two? It was definitely a lot of fun for me. <laughs> so that's it from me. Have a nice day, even your night, and see you next time. Bye! <laughs> I have no idea what my neighbors are thinking. Oh my god!